everyone, Joe Lawrence of Business Credit Workshop, and in this video, we're gonna talk about how to set up a LLC for your real estate business. Stay tuned. So for those of you that don't know, not only am I a business credit coach, but I'm also a real estate investor. I've been investing in real estate for quite some time. I'm not even proud of the number because it makes me kind of sound old, but it's been over 13 years. I've even purchased and sold over 100 real estate transactions. One of the things that I see a lot of people ask about is how do you set up an LLC and even why do you set up an LLC for real estate investing? So. From my perspective, you're gonna hear a very unique perspective because not only is it about real estate investing with me, but also how you can use the entity to build up business credit financing. So I should first, of course, preface this by go talk to a tax qualified professional, go consult with your attorney. I'm definitely not a qualified professional. Make sure that you go talk to, it doesn't cost that much money, talk with a qualified professional, get the proper advice in this area. Okay, well, let me share with you though, some of my experience. What you could do is you could set up an LLC for each property that perhaps you're doing the Burr method on, which is essentially buying a property, fixing it up, refinancing it, enjoying that rental income. So buying a whole property, or even for a fix and flip property. So primarily what I'll do is I'll create a single use entity, an LLC, and you could do this again with your lawyer. You could do this online through the Secretary of State. You could even do this on a website like LegalZoom. So you create your company, you create your entity, and if I'm working on a property on, uh, you know, Ellen Drive or whatever, I'll call the company Ellen Management Group or something like that, right? So I create the company and the managing member of the company can be a parent entity. And that entity could be located, let's say for example, in, in another state that allows the members of the entity to be anonymous. So I'll give you an example of what I mean. If you have an entity set up in Wyoming, if someone were to look up the corporate documents, they can't actually see the names of the members of that entity, okay? So that does allow some anonymous factor to your asset protection. If I'm doing the deal in New Jersey, I will have the single use entity set up as a New Jersey entity and then the managing member of that single use entity is that parent company that I just mentioned, okay? So the parent company in this example would be an entity formed in Wyoming. The reason why I like this setup is number one, it allows you to actually offset some of your liability, right? So that the hope here is that the assets from one LLC is not getting attached to the liability and all that if you get into a lawsuit or some type of dispute with other assets that you own personally or other assets that your business owns because each entity represents one property. Or the way my CPA had me do it is a, each group of properties was under one entity because it came, became a lot of bookkeeping. But long story short is that each property that you're doing, whether it's a flip or buy and hold, they each have their own entity set up, their own LLC, S Corp, C Corporation, whatever it is that uh, you wanna go with. Okay, so you set up your entity protection, your asset protection, all that. Once you have that set up, the entities that you're creating can actually go get business credit financing. So what I did was I did a whole bunch of deals in New Jersey. I created five different LLCs. I created uh, for five different deals, right? It was a little bit extra work to do it that way. Um, but I did it that way because I was able to go get five business credit cards with PNC Bank, with a local bank in our area, in our region. And PNC Bank is a portfolio lender. They offer their own business credit card. I have another video that explains the power of finding lenders that offer their own business credit cards. But what it allowed me to do is get five times the amount of business credit because I had five times the entities. And, and yet I was me as the only uh, guarantor of each card. And none of these business credit cards show on my personal credit report and each one, the lowest one was 10, the highest one was $25,000. So you could you could add it up anywhere from 15, 20 probably was, was the average of all of them each. But long story short, it allowed me to have multiple business credit cards, which are definitely helpful to have more capital for my real estate business. It offset some of the liability, right? Through asset protection and things like that. And you have the choice at that point, whether you want everything to roll up into one checking account, uh, which, which you could do. And if you did that, there are banks that'll lend you money based on the deposit history of that checking account. So that's really cool. That's very powerful. You could use that to your advantage if, if you decide to, or you could have everything separate and all separate bank accounts. You know, you can go either way on that, whatever you, you decide on that. Make sure when you set things up, 
Obviously, you want to have your operating agreements, you want to have all your documents in place. Easiest thing I think is get local counsel to give you advice in whatever state that you're in. I think that's that's the best route to take. I've been doing it for years, so I, I, I feel like I've gotten the advice and I, and I know what to do and I set them up pretty quickly through uh, the Secretary of State website and then I go get the EIN number and I can go get the checking account you know, a, a, a few minutes later. So that's how I set up LLCs for my real estate investing company. If you like this content, hit the thumbs up video. If you have any questions, just let me know down below in the comments. And I'll also link to an article on my blog, which is businesscreditworkshop.me that goes into this in a little more detail. I hope you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe so you'll be notified when the next video comes out.